In this section, we're going to deal with sets of, of orthogonal vectors. That means vectors that are perpendicular. First, let's deal with what's known as the inner product. The inner product of two vectors, so here we have vectors u and v and rn, and if we take the inner product, the notation for that is u dot v. In fact, sometimes this is called the dot product. And it is equivalent to finding u transpose and multiplying it by the vector v. And so what that amounts to is multiplying each of the terms and u like terms in u and v together and then taking the sum of those terms. Let's start by finding the inner product of u with the vector v. As mentioned previously, this is the same as finding u transpose times v. Since u is a 4 by 1 matrix, that means it has 4 elements, 1 column, then u transpose is 1 by 4, and v, of course, is 4 by 1. So notice that the result of this product is going to give us something that is 1 by 1. That means it's going to give us a single value. So anytime you find the inner product, you're just coming up with a scalar value. So we're showing here the steps for finding the inner product. So we have u transpose here and v. And what that amounts to is multiplying the first elements of u and v together and adding to that the second elements of u and v multiplied together. And so the result of this inner product is going to be 2 plus 6, which gives us a final answer of 8. So I've made a quick correction. The negative 1 is multiplied by the negative 2, 2 is multiplied by 0, 3 is multiplied by 2, and 0 is multiplied by 0. So now we're going to look at the inner product of v with u. So previously we did the inner product of u with v, now we're doing v with u. So it's v transpose times u. This is the result. Again, so now we're multiplying the first elements of u and v plus the second elements of u and v, etc. And notice that we get exactly the same result. So we can see here that u dotted with v, or the end product of u with v, is equal to v dotted with u, or the inner product of v with u. Now that we know how to find the inner product, we no longer need to do the transpose and then take the product with the other vector. All we need to do is just simply multiply the first elements together and add that to the second elements um, multiplied together, etc. So if we do the inner product of v with w, then it's negative 2 times negative 2 plus 0 times 0 plus 2 times negative 2 plus 0 times 1. And so we end up with 4 plus 0 minus 4 plus 0 and our final result is 0. So here the inner product of v with w is equal to 0 and we'll find later on that this has special meaning. So what I would like for you to do as part of your reading assignment is first to write the definition of the inner product and second I would like you to find the inner product of u with w. Here are some of the properties of the inner product. The first one we've just talked about and that is that the inner product of u with v is equal to the inner product of v with u. That's called symmetry. Then we have two that look almost like a distributive type of property. So here we have two vectors that are added together. And then we take the product of the sum of those vectors with u. And it's the same thing as taking the inner product of u with one of the vectors and adding that to the inner product of u with the other vector. Here we have a scalar quantity c, so c is just a constant. And so c times the inner product of u with v, I can either first multiply c by u and take the inner product with v, or multiply c by v and then take the inner product with u. That's called homogeneity. This next one is called positive definiteness. That is, if I take the inner product of a vector with itself, I'm always going to get a positive value or zero. And if u dotted with u is equal to zero, that tells us that the vector u is identically zero. For a moment, let's consider the real number line. 
If we talk about the absolute value of a number, so let's say here we have on this number line the value 1, and we want the absolute value of 1. We know the absolute value simply means take whatever value is inside of the absolute value sign or um, notation, and we make it positive. So that would give us an answer of 1. Likewise, if we take the absolute value of minus 3, we get an answer of 3. Well, geometrically, what that's giving us is the distance of the value 3 from 0 and the distance of the value 1 from 0. So when we take the absolute value, we're really getting the distance from 0. This is also true when we talk about vectors or the length of vectors in Rn. When we find something called the norm, that simply means we're looking at the, um, when we find the length of a vector, we're finding its norm, which means it is the distance of the vector or the length of the vector, its distance from its tip to the origin. If we want to find the distance from between two values on the real number line, so let's say we want to find the distance between the value 1 and the value negative 3, then we take the absolute value of the difference of those two. So it's minus 3 minus 1, which gives us the absolute value of negative 4, which gives us a value of 4. So the distance from negative 3 to 1 is a distance of 4. And so we have a, an analogy to that with vectors in Rn. That is, the distance between any two vectors is the distance between the tip of those two vectors. So let's look at length or norm and distance geometrically. So here we have a vector x in the Cartesian plane. And if we wanted to know the length or norm of x, again, it is simply the distance of x, or the tip of x, from the origin. And if I wanted to know the distance between the vectors x and y in the plane, that would be the distance between the tips of those two vectors. To find the norm of a vector, first of all, the notation is written with these double bars, whereas absolute value is single bars. The norm are double bars. It is equal to the square root of the inner product of a vector with itself. So notice that amounts to squaring each of the elements of the vector and then finding the sum of those elements. And then you take the square root of that. It's simple to think about this idea of length if we're dealing with vectors in R2. So consider this graph where we have R drawn in the Cartesian plane. The coordinates for R are x and y. So if you look at the vector up here, then the x is the first value of the vector and the y is the second value. If I wanted to know the length of R, so we're going to call that the norm of R, then what I would do is find x squared plus y squared and then take the square root. Well, that's just the Pythagorean theorem, isn't it? So the length of this vector is x squared plus y squared, and that gives us the length squared, and we find the square root to find the actual length. The distance between any two vectors, u and v, is written as distance of u and v, and it is given by the norm of the difference of the two vectors. So it doesn't matter whether or not we do u minus v or v minus u. And again, this is similar to what we do for the real number line. Here we're going to look at geometrically what it means to take the distance between two vectors. So we said before that it was the length between the tips of those two vectors. So it would be the length of the line segment that you see here. To find the length using the norm of u minus v, which we see up here, we find minus v, which we have right here. Right, so here's minus v. And so if I do u minus v, it means I attach minus v to the tip of u. So it's like adding minus v to the vector u. So we draw the minus v, and then the length that we want is this one, right? So it's the distance from the origin to the tip of minus v. 
So notice that these two segments are of exactly the same length. Right? So this and this are of equivalent lengths. Some basic properties of norms include that the norm of a vector squared is just the inner product of the vector with itself. So this, of course, just looks like the length without the square root sign. And here I have a constant times a vector v, and I'm taking the norm of that. So notice if we take the constant outside of the norm, then that is essentially all we need to do is take the absolute value of the constant and multiply it by the norm of the vector. Finding the norm is simple. So as you can see here, we're finding the norm of the vector u. So we take the square root of the inner product of u with itself. That amounts to simply squaring all of the terms in u and adding them together. And the result is the square root of 14. In the second example, I want to find the distance between the vectors v and w. So this amounts to taking the difference in the like terms from u and w, and then taking the um, square root of that, and squaring, so squaring each of those differences, adding them together, and taking the square root. So for the um, norm of v minus w, I take the difference in these two values. So it's negative 2 minus a negative 2 and then I square that. So for the first one I get 0, the second one is 0, the third term is 16, and the last is 1, which gives us an answer of the square root of 17. So the next part of your reading assignment, I would like for you to write the definition for the norm of a vector, the definition for the distance between two vectors, and then I would like you to find the norm of w minus v, which is the distance between w and v, and I would like you to tell me something about its relationship with the norm of v minus w. Normalizing a vector simply means that we want to find a vector of length 1 that is in the same direction as a vector that we're given v, for example. So here we have this vector v, which is uh, the vector 1, 1, and we'd like to normalize it. So first notice that the length of v is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which gives us the square root of 2. So it does not currently have a length of 1. To normalize it, we want to find a new vector w that is in the same direction as v, but has a length of 1. The way you do that is you take the vector v, and you divide it by its norm. So notice you could do the same thing on the real number line. So for example, if I wanted to know a, uh, well, if I wanted a value of length 1 on the real number line and say I had negative 3, if I divided negative 3 by the absolute value of 3, I would get negative 1. So it goes in the same direction as negative 3, but it's of length 1. All right, so let's do this. The vector is 1, 1. The norm of v is the square root of 2. So we have 1 over the square root of 2 times the vector 1, 1. So the result is 1 over square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. Notice that the norm of w is equal to 1. And indeed, w is in the same direction as v. In fact, 1 over square root of 2 is approximately 0.7. So if we were to graph that in the Cartesian plane, so in the red vector you see there is v. So if we were to graph w in the plane, w would look like this. So again, it's in the same direction as v, but it has a length of 1. So the last thing I want to talk about is what it means for two vectors to be orthogonal. So here I have two vectors u and v. And this definition says that they are orthogonal if the inner product of the two vectors is equal to 0. So let's, um, for a moment, do a few examples. So in these examples, we have the vectors u and v. Here we have a set of vectors in R2. And notice that when we find the inner product of these two vectors, the result is 0. This simply means that if I were to draw these two vectors in the Cartesian plane, they would be orthogonal or perpendicular to one another. Likewise, we have these two vectors in R3. 
Notice that the inner product of the two vectors again is zero, which says if I were to draw these vectors in R3, they would be orthogonal or perpendicular to each other. So for these examples, both sets of vectors are orthogonal to one another. What I'd like for you to do as the last part of your reading assignment, please write down the definition of orthogonal. In class on Friday, we will talk about the geometric interpret interpretation of orthogonality.